According to the American Cancer Society, one in every two men and one in every three women will get cancer in their lifetime. And the story you're about to hear often goes untold. I'm T. Chappelle. And I'm Lee Zurich. It's about blood transfusions and how they can be a critical component of cancer treatment. The American Red Cross says about five units or half the amount of blood in your body are needed every minute to help someone battling cancer. And yet, just 3% of eligible people in the U.S. actually give blood. Reporter Heather Graff explains the need and shares one woman's full circle journey. Teresa Tarleton has worked at the American Red Cross in Baltimore for more than 30 years. As manager of this quality control laboratory. And has it all been in this building? It has. You might say she's in the business of blood. It's a lot of work behind it. Teresa's job is to oversee the processing and testing of any blood products that are donated here. Her team ensuring all federal safety standards are met. So there's so many departments that one unit of blood has to go through. And because the Red Cross Blood Donation Center is in the same building as Teresa's office, okay? mm -hmm. she often sees firsthand where that blood is coming from. Okay. As people like yeah. Kalina O'Connor roll up their sleeves. It only took a couple minutes out of my day and it saved someone's life. So I think it's worth it. The employees here treat every unit of blood as special as we can. But Teresa never expected she'd be on the receiving end of some of the very blood that comes through her lap. When the doctor told me I had AML, acute myeloid leukemia, I was shocked. I immediately started receiving treatment, and during that time, I lost a lot of blood. Her doctor at Johns Hopkins Sydney Kimmel Comprehensive Cancer Center explains that's a common complication. Not only does their cancer cause them to have low blood count, but our medicines, our chemotherapies, will also suppress the bone marrow, which is the organ that makes blood. We have to support them with blood transfusions to get them through this critical time until their own bone marrow can recover. And so in a lot of ways, those blood transfusions are sustaining them through the course of their treatment. Exactly. About how many of your patients typically need that? Most of my patients need that. It's why cancer patients use nearly one fourth of the nation's blood supply and about half of all platelet donations. That's more than patients fighting any other disease. Very simply, I don't think that we would be able to treat many folks without the support and backup that blood transfusions provide. The hard part is that it's not something that most folks are thinking about until their family member receives a diagnosis of cancer. So the American Red Cross shares that message frequently as it collects blood donations and distributes them to hospitals across the country. One thing to remember about blood donation and blood products in general is that there's a shelf life. So every 42 days, whole blood goes bad and every five days platelet donations go bad. Their goal is to maintain a five-day supply of all blood types at all times, but that need isn't always met, like when the Red Cross declared its first ever blood crisis during the COVID-19 pandemic, and more recently, a national blood shortage in September of 2023, when donations were down about 25%. The concern is that any decrease could impact cancer patients at a critical time in their fight. We don't want them waiting for the right blood product that they need to feel better. And that's why we need that constant stream of blood donors to come in, not just one time, but every time they're eligible to donate blood. In Teresa's case, she required more than 20 platelet transfusions and four units of whole blood to get her through treatment, so she could then receive a bone marrow transplant from her daughter. I got another day. And you are now in remission? I am now in remission. How good does it feel to be able to say that? A year ago, I would thought it wouldn't, wouldn't happen. And uh, it has. And when she could finally return to her job at the American Red Cross. Well, I was receiving platelets. Teresa noticed the staff had hung this picture up inside the lab. My coworkers, you know. They supported me. A reminder that the blood they process here can serve as a cancer patient's lifeline. It's just amazing and it does make a difference. And Teresa is proof. We appreciate every donation. Otherwise, I wouldn't have made it.
Reporter Heather Graff joins us now. Heather, the Red Cross has said the number of people donating blood through that organization has dropped about 40% over the last two decades. Do we know why? Lee, there are several factors at play, but one of them in recent years is the fact that more and more people are working remote. Prior to the pandemic, a lot of employers would host blood drives right at their offices in partnership with the Red Cross. And so that was an easy, convenient way for folks to donate. But since so many people are working from home now, the Red Cross says it's more difficult to host those types of events and to meet donors where they are. Heather, if someone is interested in donating blood, what do they need to know? There are some requirements donors have to meet. For instance, to give whole blood or platelets, you have to be at least 17 years old in most states. They'll also check your iron levels and ask you about any recent travel outside the U.S. To learn more about those eligibility requirements, go to redcrossblood.org. And remember, it's not just cancer patients who depend on those donations.